This is Alex Holcomb with Applied Information Sciences and what I want to show is how you can use the asset URL selector provided by Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007 inside of a custom field control. And the way we're going to use it is in a custom field which will allow us to define a relationship between two documents. So let's get started. Now what I want to do is keep track of relationships between documents. And what I mean by relationships, so that can be several things. Uh, for instance, that could be where I've got a copy of one document that resides in a separate location, and I want to keep track of where that copy uh, is. Uh, another could be I've got multiple renditions of the same content. Uh, I, I, another example would be I've got uh, an email message, and I've got multiple attachments associated with it, and I want to maintain the relationship between the email message and the attachment files. Now let me show you what I mean. So I've got this document library set up here, and in it I've got two documents that are renditions of each other. Uh, they contain the same content, uh, but one is a Word document and the other is a text file. Now I've got this relationship field set up here, and you can see that uh, it's populated with the path to the text document. So this, this uh, Word document doc1 has a relationship with text1.text. All right. Now I could uh, create this field as a text field or a link field and that would force the user to go in and manually type in what that path is uh, but instead what I want to do is provide uh, a user experience so that the user can can uh, go and traverse the sites and libraries to pick the file through UI rather than having to manually type that in and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a custom field and custom field control and inside that field control I'm going to use the asset URL selector uh, that'll provide all of the user experience that we're looking for here. And let me show you what I mean. So if I come and look at the, if I come and edit the properties of this document, you'll see that I've got my relationship field here, uh, and it's using the asset URL selector control. And that provides the text box here that's storing the value, and it also provides this browse button. And when I click on the browse button, it will open up this pop-up dialog, which will allow me to go and traverse through all the sites, and that I have access to and all the libraries so I can go and pick the specific document I want in this relationship. You see here it's text1.text, .text. I click OK, that value is stored here in the text box and when I click OK here on this form it will go and it stores that value inside uh, the relationship field for this list item. Okay, now I'm doing this through the uh, through a custom field and a custom field control and if we go look at that real quick I've got this relationship field, uh, and this is the custom field that I'm using. It's deriving from SP text field, and really all this is doing is allowing me to call my custom fields control, right? So in the field rendering control method, uh, I'm calling this, uh, I'm creating a new instance of this relationship field control, and, and that's my control that I'm using. If we go look at that, uh, a couple things to notice here. One, we see that we're using the um, Microsoft.SharePoint.Publishing.WebControls namespace. And that's what contains this asset URL selector uh, that we're using to provide this user experience. Uh, you see we're deriving from the base field control, right? So we have complete control over how we want uh, the, the thing rendered. Uh, and you'll notice um, there's a couple pieces of functionality that, we're wanted, that we want to do here. And so we're going to override a couple methods. Uh, the first is just displaying it on the page when we're in edit mode. Right? The second is populating it with a value uh, if there was previously a value assigned to this field. Uh, and then the third is, is persisting this value in that field in the list item um, when we click OK on the form. Now the way we do those three things, uh, the first is, uh, let's look at the create child controls method. So when we're in edit mode, we want to display this asset URL selector. So we create a new instance of it and we add it to the controls collection uh, for this field control. Okay, and that will display it on the uh, uh, on the form when this is in edit mode. Uh, so that gets it displayed. Now we want to populate it with the previous value if a previous value has been set. So in the render method we override that and we look to see if it's in edit mode and we look to see if the list item field value uh, is not null meaning that it has some value that's been set. Maybe an empty string, it may be uh, the URL path, uh, but regardless, if it has something set, if it's not null, uh, then we go ahead and set uh, the property of the asset URL selector uh, to that value. And uh, 
so it will show up in the text box. And the way we do that is we set the asset URL property of our asset URL selector to the list item field value, right? And that's the value of this field uh, for this list item. Now the final piece of this is actually saving the value if a user has gone in and selected a related document. And the way we do that is we look to see if the page that this control on that this control is on in this form is being uh, is, is during a is post back event. And if it's during a post back and we're in edit mode, then we take the value of that asset URL selector, which is in the asset URL property, and we set it to the list item field value. And that will persist the value for us in that field for this list item. And that's how we get it to work. Uh, the final step with our custom field control is creating this field types XML file. Uh, this just defines the type name uh, and the uh, we strong name the assembly, put that information in the field type class here. We put the assembly in the GAC or in the bin directory and we take this field types XML file and we drop it in the 12 directory uh, in the under the, the templates folder slash XML folder with the other field types. Reset IIS and SharePoint will automatically pick up uh, this custom field type for us and allow us to associate it with our document library, which is what I've done here, and that's why it's showing up here in shared documents. Now there's a couple things to note. Uh, so the asset URL selector is very nice in that it provides a bunch of functionality for the end user to be able to go and select other documents within SharePoint. All right, these documents have to be within SharePoint. Um, if you want to limit it to documents, then you should probably do some checking uh, for the value that they've selected to make sure that it actually is a document rather than a list item. Um, all the security is handled for us, right? So if I don't have access to a particular site or library, um, all the security trim is automatically done for me. So if nothing else, I hope you've seen that the asset URL selector is a control that's available to you and something that you can use within your own custom field controls. Uh, in my quest to create this relationship field, what I want to do is make it more bidirectional, meaning I want the relationship to automatically uh, be reflected with both documents. So the way I'm going to handle that is in another how-to and I'm going to store the value inside of a secondary list rather than storing it inside of the field itself.